Hello guys, good evening. It's yet another Tuesday, but I think I can say happy new month. Happy July. Uh, yes or no? Yes. It's not too late. It's never too late. Never. Hap- oh, Niko Nangine. Happy mid-year. Yes, it is. Good I've always morning. wanted to say that to somebody, so uh, the somebody's is you guys today. So welcome to City Lighters Bible Study, and of course, we continue in the amazing book of Mark, and especially after yesterday's or <laughs> service, hey. The book of Mark has come back to life in another whole new way. I, want, I could sing like a song, but it was appropriate for the audience. So, a whole new season. Ah, thank you, Benta. <laughs> so, yeah, Karibuni Sana to Mark chapter 8. And as usual, as is practice here, Lazima to introduce the panelists. And let's go to the special. So, we to the So, to Tanzania on my extreme left. I love to come. To skip the to end Nini I love to read come again. So I'm not skip mgeni like. Dude your side kona hiyo ka umf. Umf ya. Ka um. Good. Hi guys. <laughs> Tweri again. Born again still glad to be here. Glad to it's always an honor to serve with you guys. Yes, me fry. Me fry. Me fry. Ni me fry. Mbasa. My name is Moshiri. It's still a pleasure being here. I'm still born again. And now introducing our guest. Ta da da da. It's fine. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Wamboy Mwania. If you're more elite, you can call me Benta. But that's why. You're more what? Guys, yeah, Wamboy. Glad to be here. Born again. Yeah, lover of Christ. All right, Wamboy. Benta because I'm Benta. elite. Yes, mm, I'm elite. Good. Whatever that means, I am it. Oh yeah. So <laughs> let's delve right into the chapter of Mark chapter eight, and Tweri will graciously read for us. Na njoto lazima atasema pia version so we version yako iko tu sawa but Tweri anapenda kusoma na version yake yeah napenanga because it is iko na your own na iko na elite oh well what had intended <laughs> so we'll do mark chapter 8 yes, i'm please. reading from the nlt version so about this time that's verse 1 about this time another large crowd had gathered and the people ran out of food again Jesus called his disciples and told them, I feel sorry for these people. They have been here with me for three days and have nothing left to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will faint along the way, for some of them have come a long distance. Verse 4, his disciples replied, How are we supposed to find enough food to feed them out here in the wilderness? Jesus asked, How much bread do you have? Seven loaves, they replied. So Jesus told all the people to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves, thanked God for them, and broke them into pieces. He gave them to his disciples who distributed the bread to the crowd. Verse 7, a few small fish were found too. So Jesus also blessed this and told the disciples to distribute them. They ate as much as they wanted. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven large baskets of leftover food. Verse 9, these were about 4,000 people in the crowd that day, and Jesus sent them home after they had eaten. Immediately after this, he got into a boat with his disciples and crossed over to the region of Dalmanutha. Verse 11, when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had arrived, they came and started to argue with him. Testing him, they demanded that he show them a, a miraculous sign from heaven to prove his authority. When he heard this, he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why do these people keep demanding a miraculous sign? I tell you the truth, I will not give this generation any such sign. So he got back into the boat and left them, and he crossed to the other side of the lake. But the disciples had forgotten to bring any food. They had only one loaf of bread with them in the boat. As they were crossing the lake, Jesus warned them, Watch out! Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod. At this, they began to argue with each other because they hadn't brought any bread. Verse 17, Jesus knew what they were saying, so he said, Why are you arguing about having no bread? Don't you know or understand even yet? Are are your hearts too hard to take in? You have eyes, can't you see? You have ears, can't you hear? Don't you remember anything at all? When I fed the 5,000 with five loaves of bread, how many baskets of leftovers did you pick afterward? 12, they said. And when I fed the 4,000 with seven loaves, how many large baskets of leftovers did you pick? Seven, they said. Don't you understand yet? He asked them. 
verse 22, when they arrived at Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to Jesus and they begged him to touch the man and heal him. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked, can't you see anything now? The man looked around. Yes, he said, I see people, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again and his eyes were open. His sight was completely restored and he could see everything clearly. Jesus sent him away saying, don't go back into the village on your way home. Verse 27, Jesus and his disciples left Galilee and went up and went up to the village and went up to the villages near Caesarea Philip. Philippi. As they were walking along, he asked them, who do people say I am? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say you are one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? Peter replied, you are the Messiah. But Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. Then Jesus began to tell them that the Son of Man must suffer many terrible things and be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but three days later, he would rise from the dead. Verse 32, as he talked about this openly with his disciples, Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples, then, reprim then reprimanded Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Then calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, If any of you wants, wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Verse 37, is anything worth more than your soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And that's the word of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord. Amen. Yeah. It's like a disaster. It's like a disaster. It's like a I know. And now again, so Mark chapter 8 again mm. starts with another feeding. Hello, food lovers like myself. Wow. And I was... But I also wanted to ask, the mm -hmm. first question I wanted to ask, why mm -hmm. wrote the 5,000 and then the 4,000. The 4, mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, Yani, it is really in my mind. You know, guys, those questions I keep having sometimes. I'm like, so yes, yes, when you are present today, you are going to a crusader. Yeah, okay, sir. Maybe not funny, but yeah. Keep going, <laughs> keep going. Then. But yeah, keep so I was exploring going. this and I think um, it, it takes us straight into something that we've mentioned a couple of times in the book of Mark mm -hmm. and it's compassion, yeah? Yes. Like, uh, I have compassion for these people and they have already been with me three days and I have nothing to eat and I was looking at it like the way, you know, people, when they were following Christ at that time, it was easy for, like even today, like there are ministries where people will... And then, okay, something has been trending on Twitter and I don't know if this is the proper time. I did not ask my leader if we could explore this. There's a lot of church hat going on and there's a lot of commentary on Twitter. Yeah. The last couple of weeks, if you guys have been watching around paying people who serve in church, mm -hmm. like instrumentalists, videographers and stuff. And people had yeah, so much it, yeah. to say yes. around it. Mm -hmm. But then over here I was looking at, when he says, you have been with, they have been with me three days and have nothing to eat, where sometimes you find guys have been in ministry and maybe the ministry leaders don't even notice. And maybe not physical food, food. Like maybe kuna msia meka mkusav. Maybe kamera yake suju lifanyi kanini. Ana itajituka memcard. But church iko, waka una memcard tutatafutatu mtu mwingine. Because you're replaceable. And those things, things like those around the lack of compassion. In present day times where. If Jesus is our example. How we don't follow through with some of the things that he did. I don't know if anyone had thoughts around that as we get right into it. Well, I saw it on Twitter, and I thank God I never commented because um, church art is such a sensitive topic. You get what I mean? Because um, there's something a good friend of mine said, Anetwa Muhanji. He said that you won't be the first person to be hurt, neither won't you be the last. And we need to understand that as harsh as that is, but it's the truth. You won't be the first person because... Uh, People tend to pick other people to join their pain. 
that bandwagonia. Um, nimehatiwa, so you guys need to feel what I'm feeling. Oh, you guys need to join this wagon. Yes, the church has hurt us. You get what I mean? If we decide to talk about it, I'm so sure to time Aliza. You get what I mean? But we need to understand that um, not, yes, not everyone is the same spiritual level as you. But you need to also have the aspect of the Holy Spirit to guide you so that you can avoid these faces of church heart. Because even you as a person, as a human being, you can tell when you're growing and you're not growing. You can tell. Musa Manga, you can tell. You know, many people say, oh, not your bad, don't grow. But you cannot be a baby faith forever. You can't be baby faith forever. You need to elevate. You need to let God. People say, purify me, Lord, make me whole again. So when God makes you whole and God lifts you up, then how taki, then unatakaje. Okay, now that's my point. Yes, people have been hurt. Sijakata, it's fine. You've been hurt, but what do you do about it? Because you, can, because you can't keep following. You cannot be there all the time. Oh, I've been hurt. Sawa. Okay, then mupananga to tafte solutions. Because following about the same same thing, honestly, um, utashindapo, and you won't grow. And maybe even God wants to do such mighty things in your life, but you're so there comfortable because you think I need to be hard. Let's have a hashtag of church heart. Nisawa, it a trend. Imagine in a trend in Asia, then people go on to the next thing. That, that's the issue about social media. Mta vumisha, it will be a trending topic a whole day. Then after that, Tisha, then people will look for something else the following day. Me for me is let's keep moving forward. If you've been hurt and you feel for real, for real, it's something that unajua, it's such a way to reconcile, then let God deal with that hurt. Because we are mere mortals, then God knows you. Before you formed you, he knew you. So anajua, this is a certain time, this certain time in your life, here, whatever, this had to happen to you. But imagine if you, you are fighting yourself, imagine God and Kwambia, oops, there's gonna be a bump. You see that? That's what I'm saying. When you have the Holy Spirit to guide you, imagine maybe at don't have video. Because, yes, I feel it about when guys have been hurt. It's true. Some stories, but we must learn to move forward and let God be done to deal with that hurt. I don't know if I make sense, but for me, that's what I'll say about that. Because I know each trend, I follow it at some point in the Chokanayo. Because there are so many things. Where I was like, so what's true and what's not? What can you see and what you can't see? That's what I'll say about that. I don't know what you guys think about church heart. Yeah. Okay, okay for me, I'll, I'll look at it this way. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a place as a believer you grow in maturity that you, that you start experiencing what I call temporary amnesia. <laughs> you start forgetting that you are a sinner at some point. And so that forget, forgetfulness also comes with a lack of compassion and mercy for people who are going through and you'll find at times people are going through the same thing god delivered you from like in where amnesia you forgot where you are <laughs> so, so you become very judgmental and harsh on a person yet you are actually delivered in the same place you're condemning someone four years ago is that your memory where you forgot so with that temporary amnesia i think you also lose that compassion and mercy for people and, and, and we can become because as much as the word of God is uh, how you use it you, you can use it as an offensive you know as in attacking the enemy with it but at times we, we can use it internally to attack other people with it and we find the case of Peter he used a sword to actually cut yeah yeah and, and so I, I think it's it's, it's Part of the cure of that is you going continuously to the cross and it reminding you that at some point you were a sinner. Come on, you know. If it was not for the mercy and grace of God, you'll be in the same position with the person you're condemning and you're judging. Yeah. So I think part of the reason we we forgetfulness. So you'll, you'll be like, you were, you were, but then four years ago, you're actually in the same, is this a, where were you forgot? Um, I think also we need to be careful about, because I'm wondering, think about any other institution that has 
people who work or who do things in the same say for example a hospital yeah. why don't we have hospital hut and you know like it trends kuna nurses have done this doctors have done this and we've seen a lot of that but why do we only focus on church hut and i think also part of the dynamic is it's part of the enemies you know tool against the church because if he can get a whole generation to believe that the church is associated with heart then people stop going to church people stop fellowshipping and you know it's downhill from there so i think we need to like separate issues and also be wary about you know how we approach the situation and it's not to negate that people have been hurt in the church mm. but i think there's also an aspect of yeah there's an aspect yeah, yeah. <laughs> well said and i think let's just not that we are in that place of um it's i won't say congregational but i'm thinking of the body of christ being way before like our small second letters congregation and the verse that at very in the discussion before the discussion okay, one of these days i think we should record that yeah when we were talking about verse 12 where he says um where does this generation ask for a sign truly i tell you no sign will be given to it yeah and there's that thing we were talking about i think moshi had opened the conversation yeah. around how the the need for the signs to be seen so that i mean we know we Christo. have faith we believed but it's like eh hey, i love sasa which is happening i think even more nowadays it's even more rampant than i would say the times of the tukute teresa fellowship yeah was as ibetu kama mko mezario hiyo time unajua hamtaelewa sijui kuna subtitles yeah there's a time there was a wave and our, ch- our parents and our grandparents kuna time yani for them it was matendo haikuwa like miracular signs were not even asked for them they were like wow every year we go people would pray for grass to be green and it was green but nowadays like you will come even to a church like sitlaita za lafu ko msena kama ko eh miracles are church alaf sasa kama kuna miracles acha nitafuta church ya miracles na science and it's because we want them to be big and publicized and fantastic and you know lakini maybe the miracle is for us to welcome people and they can come and say they found a home but tunataka vish okay nitango vishasha vishindo kiki ah is the word i too much of tanzanian content tunataka kiki kanisani so that at least we can see that god is doing something and it's like we have the audacity to even demand of it like yeah but there's why those miracles so i think that's where i would like for us now to push the conversation okay let me say this mm-hmm. number one, the gospel is not signs and wonders mm-hmm. yeah. the gospel is christ and him crucified yeah. signs and wonders are a testament to the gospel so i cannot preach mm-hmm. signs and wonders because akuna gospel ya signs and wonders okay. but the moment i focus on him crucified then signs and wonders come as a testament that the gospel is actually true it actually says and these signs shall follow they that believe we do the reverse they that believe follow these signs <laughs> but it's it's the signs that are supposed to follow those that believe and the signs are supposed to be a testament that whatever let's say that the speaker is saying that that gospel is truth so i'll i'll put it this way if there's an absence of signs and wonders then check the gospel that is being preached if it is if it is not because paul say, Paul keeps repeating this word he says I preach Christ and him crucified he focused on and the message of the cross was what he preached and if you have deviated from your message of the cross then again i expect that signs and wonders will not be there because they cannot come as a testament to a gospel that is not really the gospel ilikuwa so could it be that the reason there is an absence of it is that ile message na piana it's not drawing people to the cross because how many times how many times there were there were times when you'll hear the message of the cross it had a cross it had the blood any kulikuwa na foundations of it yani you get yeah so so for me i think it's nil we need we need to go back to your what what paul used to say the simplicity of the gospel you know there's a place he condemns a church and he tells them what has dragged you guys from the simplicity of the gospel 
Because I think signs and wonders are not the gospel. They are supposed to be a testament to the gospel. And even as a speaker, what I believe is going to be happening is that the moment you, as a preacher, the moment you focus your message on him and him crucified, then the Holy Spirit is going to work out signs and wonders as a testament to that message. Yeah. It's more of putting the cat before the horse. Kurukadarama, <laughs> so to speak. Benta thoughts? Um, I think these people had seen Christ performing miracles. Mm. I mean, they were there in the previous um, times that Christ had performed miracles and they'd heard about it. But now they're asking, in fact, demanding that he show them a miraculous sign from heaven. Mm. I wonder what they meant by that. Did they mean you know, the heavens open, open or, you know, yeah, you know, like, I wonder what they mean by a miraculous. You know, you know. <laughs> and you're saying what they were thinking, mm-hmm. they, they were thinking of in terms of times they are Elijah. Mm-hmm. So they wanted him to come, so then there's fire, oh. so they were asking him something like that, dramatic. So there's fire coming from heaven, that way. It makes sense because they had already seen other miracles, but now they want a miracle from heaven. And I think it's, it's, it kind of explains how um, sometimes we say if the world could see like a healing miracle happen live, everyone would believe. But I think this shows us, even if you came and you healed and they can see for real for real this is a person even if you raise someone from the dead Mm -hmm. there are people who have just decided within themselves i will never believe in god Mm -hmm. so and i think that's why um christ will talk about how um blessed are those who believe um even without seeing because i think it's something you decide within yourself so yeah like don't think that people are not believing because they've not seen a miracle. Yeah. It's just a heart issue. Heart issue. Yeah. Ooh. Heart issues are usually so complicated. Yeah. Because nice. yeah. I think sometimes you're like, and I'm looking at the Pharisees, even verse 11, they had said, they came and began to question Jesus to test him. Like these guys, every time it's like they're like, ah, oh, come say. They, they can see this is what they read because they, they were reading the scrolls, they were read, always reading the Bible, the prophecies. So for them, they can see it's him, but I guess they're just like, Am I, is it because Jesus was maybe too simple? Am I too? It can't happen it can't in our generation. Happen. I think part of the problem is, mm. um, it, it said that they were expecting a political leader. Someone who oh, would make the, Exactly. Who would <laughs> liberate the Jews <laughs> from, <laughs> from the Roman rule, you know, and the Jews would begin now to rule and to like in a physical plain but that's not what they were getting he meant a spiritual kingdom so that was part of the problem like any doubt man is is, is terrible because i'm imagining like it's like now ask maybe praying for what what did what did paint a picture in present day times paint a picture in present day times how we'd expect maybe salvation to be is it as being saved from okay now mental pictures, painting a picture is like salvation is the other side of let's say the Rift Valley, let's go back to GFC and anyway, so, so salvation is like not like the nani the nani is the kina pharaoh now to on your then God is like, ah, ah Moses make a way in the waters it's like, is that what we even now are expecting, so sometimes when God works in our hearts, we're like lakini bado nategia kiki and then because of our vagueness tunataka tu kikitu, because even then we're like saying so fanya tu kikitu I imagine like not that this conversation kiki to tuki happen at to jue. Okay. Yeah. Imagine how they're like, where do something. And then sometimes it's funny, okay, it's can judge. It makes me think of these guys who preach in the streets. Wale watch any wow nesha vide. Dabi ni baya. Navitu na keme koza mwili. Shoda. Nikieka shoda kwa yi kitu. Ni wanesha shoda ni baya. Nikiweka ina kwa brak. Nikieka yi kitu mukunyo maj those example. Who used to do chemical experiments during his services to try and show so that Mpande by we are three tens. I'm just talking about Taja. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, three ten. Like the way, I think now people will go there because they're like, oh, we're not going to have miracles happen, but they're fabricated. 
and then now we look at the other side of life or other side the other side of the spectrum where people are doing these things faking kai boy leo ni ile siku faking miracles that they can keep a congregation then how do I, how do we speak about that cuz it sounds like calling out but it's a, it's something that's happening in today in 2021 in Nairobi i dare say the, the key ingredients ingredient in, 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 oh, okay. in, in, in event evangelism <laughs> I don't think it's signs and wonders mm. it's a conviction of the holy spirit it's a conviction of the holy spirit mm. and so as a, a as an evangelist if you don't if you go out there without a clear intention of partnering with the holy spirit no matter what shall any signs and wonders yeah hizo zote ufanye you don't have the power to convict a heart and so initially up on you I, i think we go wrong because we are not bringing him into partnership into evangelism one and two evio and so you're expecting whatever you're doing physically to actually change a person but you remember even in the bible as much as lazarus was raised from the dead the next scripture says they were seeking to kill him as in the pharisees yani after he was raised from the dead they actually wanted to kill him to to to, you know, to kill the testimony yalikuwa uh-huh. na because he was bringing popularity to Jesus. And so they they sought to kill Lazarus yadi. And so I think one of the key ingredients here ya nini evangelism it, it should start from that place of partnership with the Holy Spirit because you can proclaim the gospel to someone for even 30 years and he never converts. And you can do even you know healings and and, and what and, and they don't convert their hearts until they that operation and yeah. i agree with benta on them your rejection of jesus he, he was not the messiah we going to expect yeah them they were <laughs> they were really expecting actually in their mind they expected david as in they expected a guy who will come riding on a horse at a, at a form yani and a commanders and and everything and then he's going to go straight against the roman rule and jesus disappoints them i think yeah very much it's like no, for them it was like what they ordered but but is what they received <laughs> david on a donkey jesus on no yeah. david on a horse jesus on a donkey yeah. instead of magads ni mm. disciples we to tattoo mm. instead of a carpet ni this was our mama wa your time wow. my god as in I love the way Jesus just presents himself it's like what you expect and i think even along alongside like king in the kingdom how even as there are times in our faith like you'll expect god to be a certain way and then to keeps liking to say don't put god in a box so like there's a way we put god like he can only manifest in the key voice so we expect you know that voice from heaven every time you're like i'm seeking the lord on clarity on a matter but you're expecting for him to say rebecca i created you dakumen himself na niambia but they begs have you ever thought about this and this i'm like That's not God. Like he needs to speak to me himself. And after the thing like saying so casually, Mungu ushuka usitumane, eh usinitumie mtu kuja wewe mwenyewe and then God appears but not not how we want him. And I think that's how even Christ I think at that time was he appeared in the way the way you both explain. They wanted maybe flamboyance, a lot of arrogance and what you'd call mighty strength but yeah, muscles and everything but God he was born by yani mtu wa Maria yani. I always like to think about yani how in today's time if you'd be told like the abalida is the like boy you saw growing up maybe mtu your shopkeeper yenu ko ai ai we god at we you expect them to be having gone to a harvard and all those other schools raised on good you know manners and everything alafu naambia mtu your shopkeeper yenu ndio our next leader alafu ko ai god unatucheze akili but no that's how i think god operates in a way so that we never expect him because i think expectations is even what makes us very judgmental of even people if i expect better to always appear in a certain way the day she doesn't appear that way i'm like i i doubt everything she's ever told me yeah. because of the appearance i'm expecting her you know to come in and i think that's also why um christ would say that a prophet is not accepted in his hometown because it's it's that kaboy you've seen growing up and you're just like who are you to tell me nishoka nani that says the Lord. you know <laughs> yeah And I think now um you know on that ingredient note <laughs> let's go straight into the yeast of the Pharisees. Food. <laughs> It's food for me by the way. <laughs> yeast of the Pharisees as in yeast bread but yeah. Um how um so in that part of scripture 
It's something Moshiri used to keep saying. <laughs> Because when we were studying market, like, like, you know, they think bread as just a meal, but bread was causing them so much grief. Yeah. And then now, I want us to, to explore how, um, when um, the disciples say, it's because we have no bread, and then Jesus catches them speaking about that, and then started, starts calling them out along the lines of, why are you saying you don't have bread? That's verse 17 onwards, saying, do you not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see, or ears and fail to hear? Those who have ears, alafuna nivo. And then, when I broke the five loaves of bread for the five thousand, how many basketfuls did you pick up? And they said twelve. When I also did the same for with the seven loaves for the four thousand, how many basketfuls? They say seven. And then he asked them again. Ah, uh-uh, you still not understand. And here I'm thinking, and this even me, I'm like, no, nikisama niko bade kuni a se piara dayi likuanga aje. But I'm looking at it like the way. And there's an example that the uh, the reverend who preached that. Our anniversary someone said he was like you've been healed you've, you've received but you're still waiting to walk in the man no 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 it was during prayers at Uhuru Park it's Moshiri who said like you've received healing and you're still walking with your crutches you've received the meal or abundance of food and you're still saying hey you've, you've gotten out of a bad relationship to a good one but you're like I can, you, know, you know you never know these guys. Which I think a lot of us have said in our lifetimes. <laughs> you finally pray for this. Oh my God, bless me with a partner. So what are you stories? I would love to hear. Have you ever had 12 baskets remain and see you're like, Kai, I love Zikisha. I love you. Okay, see my Jew, but well, technically, I'm going to Jew. <laughs> like when the savior goes and then talk on a talk about because I think I, I find I was in this position and I've been there many times where because of the lack of abundance previously, you're working in abundance because you're with the giver, the creator of the universe, the giver of the bread, but you're like, what are you doing? Just in case. Okay, let, let me <laughs> okay, allow me to share what I, I shared yesterday. Yes, please. So it, 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 it was just a word God gave me during group back prayers. And uh, it was something, you see, between the wilderness and Canaan, there's a place the Israelites stopped called Gilgal. Gilgal is actually the place of circumcision. Yani. But Gilgal is also the place where God removes the reproach from the shame of Egypt. Because these guys had been slaves. Now they're entering a new place where they're supposed to be free men. But here's the thing. At times, when you are, we are entering into a new season, let's say like a season of abundance, mm-hmm. at times we carry the trauma of a previous hard season. And that's why I used an example of, it's like a crippled guy who's been healed. Mm-hmm. But then he still carries his crutches. And the crutches are not a testimony that he was healed. It's actually backup in mm-hmm. case he becomes right. crippled again. So, so he clings to the crutches. Not so that you see, I've been healed. No, he keeps them. Yes, I've been healed. But what happens if one day my legs fail? So I need these crutches for that time. And so the point was we hang on to our dysfunction because it was the most comfortable place during a difficult season. And so you find like another good example is Someone waited for a job for, let's say, 10 years. I can get a job. But you know the thing that keeps them awake at night is a fear of losing that job and going back mm. to a season you waiting 10 years ago. So you're not fully living in your season of your abundance. There's trauma from your previous season. And that's why we always need that place of Gilgal where God washes away the trauma of a previously hard season. Because if it doesn't do that, we carry that trauma into a season of abundance and we don't fully enjoy it. Yeah. So, so well said. Eh, eh, nana nkutu na tatu kusema tu watu wa gil gil msujue siyo nini gil gal. Just saying. Ah, ah, unajua, unajua tu wase. But I think that spoke so well to me because I think there are times I've, I've been there 
where you hold, I call it the holding on to a little just in case, where now you're thinking this is my assurance and my insurance, and yet it's the Lord who gives and takes, the Lord who created the earth. Like we, I think sometimes they are, the enemy has shut us down to think, to, to refuse to think the Lord has, he's all knowing, all doing, all he can do anything. And like he caused water to come from a rock, you know. And it's easy when we read this example, like, Ata ko, you Lord who struck, the rock was struck and there was water, you brought mana when there, but mimi niko apa tu nimeshikiria, nini yangu niko, we, aa, wacha ta nisumia. And even we do that with our gifts. Because you pray to use your gifts, you're like, the day I get to an, a, a good church, I will serve with my whole heart. Na mnangia apa uko, hey, alafu ni imbesana, alafu sasa, niyambi mbengwa sezi, kwa nanga kurekod ni zangu. Ama hey, ni funza isa nde school sana, alafu natumia manuscript yangu, waifanya church manual, alafu anisipe, you know, you're like, eh, let me just hold out my knowledge, aa. Uh-uh. Let me give a little of asha, let me not even, like, you're an asha, like, nita asha tu kidogo, justaki hii gift yangu, hey, alafu ni, because I think a lot of times, but I guess it's a human thing, which, but over, but over time also, we allow the Lord not to work in us and through us because tunataka tu, shetani tu ametu show, kia chile stuff ni evil. It's like, like, yo, uh, I'll, 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 just one last example. It's like rejection. Ooh. You, you, are, you are a season where there's a lot of rejection. <laughs> but then God, God heals you, but there's a way you became comfortable your rejection became your comfort. <clears throat> but then when God brings you to a new season, unakuta you self sabotage your relationships because acceptance it's it's like have you ever seen ukingia you 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 you're in a dark place then you enter into a place with the light and the light is it blinds you. So it's the same way. Rejection became the norm to you that acceptance is like a light yani. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it shocks you so much that you you rather enjoy the discomfort of rejection than venture out into acceptance. And so we keep moving back into those crutches because they are more comfortable. In in one particular season, it's what was familiar. And since it's what is familiar no ninja season in Guinea and there's a lot of uncertainties, you rather cling on <laughs> to what you're used to. And so someone who has that, you'll find they tend to sabo- self-sabotage in the relationship. The moment you give them acceptance, they rather get rejection because that's more familiar to them. And it's it becomes just a whole Allow me to plug therapy here. Please go for therapy, guys. Thank you. Champion, to remember to make a mic chini. Only one a point. Say matu. Shida, majua. Umeski ona tandi kwa like atam to a chui a chui. Uju na piti o mambo. Like it's it's just interest. Like Mushiri is talking. I'm like, bro. Sunya maze to like. It's not that serious. Una sema light na tukona leta patabi. Like I feel like it's in a It's you know, it's I don't know how to say this. Just um, say it. It's 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 sad that we really do that self sabotage thing. And and it's so interesting when God says it was finished at the cross. But we really don't remember that. We like feeling like I feel this. Oh God, I'm comfortable. Oh, you know, like I, I don't know why is it una kuna so comfortable in comfort zone. Ke una una jo yenu wo wo meza ku reject so wo ko sawa. You got what I mean? You you okay so but when God gives you a good thing, you'll always have doubts and I don't understand why. Like I think that's one thing like I really want to get. why do why do we as human beings, even me as Twiri, you have that doubt? You have been given a good thing. Aki na mungu wame kupatia blueprint ya maisha kwa 2021. Lakini, bado haiko. So when Mushiri is like, you're doing that self-support, because he's like, sasa mtu wangu. How are you supposed to be comfortable? You get what I mean? Like, you like you be content. I'm not saying you're not content, but ile, you, you, you have that peace in your heart that it is okay. God spoke, God said, where were she? Like, how how do we as Christians live in the certainty of it is well? God spoke, I believe that, let's move on. And not go back 
to clinging zile za uh, man like this feels so good it's like the same way let's say for example somebody who was so comfortable with binge eating the sense of home is that ukachi na kula na una jo kuna food zingine of kula lakini wewe uko sawa wewe unatoka uko vizuri uko sawa uko utakula mtu na yeye tunajua inakumiza system yako so how does someone come out of that no one of the things is i've realized as, even as believers we rush to results before process god wants to take you through a system where you become whole actually colossians chapter 2 says that in him in christ we have been made complete so there's a place he's taking you he, he, he wants you the next relationship you're getting into there's a bit of wholeness in you the rejection is not so much of a, a part of it but then us we want to jump to results before this process wewe unataka tu kufika hiyo place yani how about you've gone through the process let me say that let's say you've gone through it wewe umetandikwa wewe umekaa miaka 7 kama jacob for real like umetandikwa your process like you see like what jacob got, went through i think jacob actually is the best example what about actually to me jacob by the actually i love this thank you for bringing taking it that time of process jacob he went through how many years seven he was given the wrong woman what did you do you went another seven na kapata mtu wake so my point is don't you think also jacob had a right to be zile za by the side story also you also also think about that think about jacob think about also how laban alimtenda na laban alimwambia by the nifanye tu kazi miaka saba saba nitakupatia mtu wako but mm laban alimcheza he had to work another seven so how do you encourage a christian like that you've gone through the process moshiri you've been faithful you have sacrificed you had to like change your whole life and let me tell you i regret nothing it's just that when you mimi mimi ni kosa mimi mepita process and i love it thank god i am the person i am because of christ but for the person who's given up let's say there's another jacob out there let's say there's a joseph like that so how do you encourage a christian like that and they've gone through the process yet they had every right to tell god by the this is too much you get what i mean like how do you tell a christian like that who's gone through the process na bado una feel it's still not enough okay the story of jacob let me say first of all mm-hmm. <laughs> jacob nini yake ilikuja when he wrestled with god <laughs> that's when he, the point of wholeness yake ilikuja that's when that guy stopped become becoming a cheat and he straightened his life The seven years he, he did with Rachel and uh, your story yake Jacob was getting what he gave and he, he was a cheat. He did the same thing it, it was I'll put it this way it was karma. Wait what? Yeah. In the it Bible too. Maybe it was paper. What? It was what? Oh MG. He, he, he lived <laughs> Jacob had lived a life of deceit all through all through. Vile lijitan it was like a mirror of what he was doing to other people because he he deceived Esau but Jacob ile time ili change was when he wrestled God from yo up to midnight that's a time yani there was a transformation umuliza um, at, at, at what was the question at, asking yeah. what about the christian who has gone through the process umepata breakthrough but still you go back to see there you said like you yeah. hold on to the clutches of may I've been healed but let me cling this to this because I don't know I'm at that person I'm at a job but what keeps them up at night is because they don't to lose it yet they've gone through the process so how do you encourage someone I mean through the process okay and come kwa na breakthrough but for them holding on to what they know that's where their comfort is but yet God wants to make them whole so how do you how huyo mtu atoke hapo kwa nimezoea wacha niachilie wacha nika hivi yani i hold on to like ni mimi na mungu how do you encourage a christian like that because i'm so sure there are many out there who don't speak 
ni vanya too well they'll come and put a face they'll come here and do all the tongues wanguke the hill people but yet when they go home instead their four walls ama their ten walls they go back to that comfort yeah how do you okay um i think allow me to answer from a psychological perspective tutoke ni kwa secular kidogo but um in psychology we say um your 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 brain has what we call neuron parts so these are what are formed for example if i if i wash clothes a lot nitazoea like i don't even have to think about it like it becomes a neuron path is created which is how for example addiction forms you do something so much that um yeah a neuron path is created which is how come we develop habits and how come we get comfortable in some place but also we say your brain there's something we call neuroplasticity so that means that your neuron paths can be changed you can create new parts which is what you know we try and do with addiction um you create new parts so that you don't have to so that addiction so that uh, you know like smoking is does not provide the kind of fulfillment or satisfaction that it used to so you create a new path so that something else creates what smoking would create for you um and i think that's why scripture will say be ye transformed to the renewal of your mind because you know like you can create new parts of you know like yeah so i think that's what we need to do like not just stopping at i was delivered you need to create new habits new parts for you to realize that um what i used to get from something i can get it from something else you know the comfort that i got from rejection i can get it somewhere else so i think we also need to do the work so that you know yeah and yeah, from a wow. spiritual point <laughs> we have a balanced panel guys <laughs> yeah that was very nice from spiritually mm-hmm. that, that's why I, I, i say this that point of gilgal it, it's god himself who washes away the shame he just does it in in his own way yani unajua that he he it probably could be he he wraps you around with his robe of righteousness mm-hmm. and and it, it makes you feel secure and but it's god who who does it for you so that you do, you, you stop going back to nini if it's that fear of rejection maybe god takes you to a place where you realize that he accepts you completely that you that you that you accepted in the beloved that says in Ephesians chapter 1 and that becomes yani for you yani you in a smamisha your place yani because now no matter what happens for you in in terms of rejection you know god fully and fully accepts me yani people may reject you but then god accepts you fully mm. if it's something like let's say the the fear of people's opinion you see <laughs> okay you see like the reason maybe you may have a fear of people's opinion is you don't have a conviction in your own truths so you need something outside of yourself to validate that is that which is within so god may heal you of that by him coming and affirming the truth that is in you so you don't need something outside to validate that which is within you see he's already healed you of that yeah because i think the moment you have a cringy any everything you say even like right now if i'm speaking i'm just mm-hmm. waiting for guys or comment up a section mm-hmm. it means I, i don't have a conviction yeah of my truth and so if it's so chronic i need to go back to god so that he reaffirms the truth that is inside of me mm. once he affirms that i really don't need validation of it outside of myself mm. i'm completely convinced of what is inside of me so so i think again it's something god does but now anyway you have a part of of doing of letting go and some point he's just gonna ask you 
you have to let it go. And let me deal it. Let me take away that reproach that, that came from that previous seasons and those trauma. And he does it. And how he does it, I, I have no... I, I really cannot explain it. He does it. He, he, he. But there's a... You always see a difference in a person who's gone through that because they usually have a peace-like thing to them. That whatever causes them trauma, they come back or disconnected from it. As in God really... He still works on, 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 on this. I think also, um, to add to that, memorizing scripture mm. that... Uh, ties into what you're feeling really, 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 really helps. helps. Yeah. Well, the word you've hidden it in your heart. Eh? And I think a lot of times is, yeah, because you have to still bring it back to, he still, I think now we still again explore God as a father and God understanding that sometimes his children will throw tantrums because they are children. <laughs> but no, his gentleness of he'll not let you at know because you're a child, you're three years old, now you'll not be punished for maybe talking back or something. But over time he will... But you see, you have to come back to him in a... What do they say? A contrite... In a heart that is... Saki kura samanga goro heheje ku. Yani, your heart is... It's not broken, like, from being broken up with someone, but you have to come back to God as a father and be like, yeah, I'm still frustrated and this is how I'm feeling. Because again, when you go back to his word, his reassurance will come from there. But you also can't make assumptions that because going back is also a humility point to seek the mercy seat. And again, it's continual. It cannot be, they were saying today, it was, it's not, in, some of things will not be instant. Like process is because things need to be worked on. Because today it's one thing, tomorrow is another one. You can have now, like I trust God as a provider, but then don't trust God as maybe your guide and leader. But over time, and that's why I think it's, it's the way we say every day we die into self, and I think that will come at the last part of this chapter where we have to be selfless in a way of even ourselves knowing I am not confident if I am away from God. I cannot win any battle outside yeah. him. But also going back constantly, that's where he wants us to be. Because I mean, if ships can leave, the sh eh, ships, gosh, if sheep can leave themselves, then what's the point of the shepherd? Okay, maybe it's not ships in there because an autopilot, but <laughs> that's not us. Christians cannot operate on autopilot. We have to keep getting our true north always redefined by the, the lead, our leader who is our father, who is our Lord. So, yeah. And let me add, also God uh, at times, even as, as she was speaking about, uh, let's say, addictions and everything, he becomes your coping mechanism. <laughs> as, as you read the word and, and, and as you, you, you realize he's replacing what was your, your, what became comfortable in your dysfunction because you found comfort in it. And with time, you start finding comfort in him. So he become your coping mechanism, such that I, th I think it even affects your mind. Instead of you thinking, this, is, this crisis is going to happen, let me go boozy. Mm -hmm. He becomes it. You're just like, I'm going to go back to God. I'm going to ask him, yeah. yeah sorry. And also to add to that, I think also like, I think we discussed this before, like how um, this Mark 8, we see like the people are not the ones who realized they were hungry mm -hmm. because they had spent time with Christ and he had become their focal point. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. they food had stopped becoming something that was, you know, so I think that's it. Like when we spend time with Christ and he becomes the object of our everything else fades away, which is the, the goal of, um, again, like in psychology, we say the from a Christian perspective, the goal of getting over addiction is to have Christ as sure. your, what was she really saying? He becomes your addiction. He replaces, so <laughs> exactly. And that's the only kind of healing that sticks. This mm -hmm. other one is very temporal, you know, but this one, when you find fulfillment in Jesus and he becomes your all in all, mm -hmm. you don't need to find fulfillment in food, mm -hmm. in drugs, in all these things. Yeah. Oh. So well said, so well said. So I think let's uh, we can now dive into the last part of uh, Mark chapter eight, where we look at the healing of the blind man. We we'll look at Peter because Peter is a subject just by himself, <laughs> and then at least we'll conclude with the way of the cross. And um, Moshe, there's something interesting you were saying around this healing of this this particular healing at Bethsaida. Please share those thoughts that you shared with us around the process again. Yeah, today process is coming up quite often. <laughs> 
okay, this, this healing at Bethsaida, I found it very interesting because it's the only time Christ heals in stages. Most of the time, he just gives you a word and it's immediate. But this time, it's progressive. The f- he actually spits at the guy. <laughs> very disgusting. <laughs> Yeah, it's still disgusting. Even if it was Jesus <laughs> doing it. <laughs> seriously. Ew. Yeah, it's, it's still that? it's still ew. Germs. <laughs> ew, like oh my god, germs. that's so gross. That's yeah. germs, yeah. Because Jesus actually he takes his spit his spits <laughs> on his eyes. And then the guy says, I'm seeing people like trees. Yeah. Then he does a miracle again. I think if you if you read it, if you're on face value, you'd actually think Nikama Jesus actually loses. His kind of power <laughs> in a in a take time, yeah. but I think it's at a, your location, a, your miracle, and what was previously speaking about that you guys are ever seen, but you're not comprehending, because if you look at the other side, he was talking to the disciples that you have eyes, but you're not seeing. Then here we have another blind man who is physically cannot see, yet is progressive. And I think it's it's for the disciples. Uh, the lesson was the fullness of who Jesus was is it's a, it's a continuous thing. Mm. Any spiritual blindness is something in a chukanga pole pole, not at once. If you it it took these guys imagine even three years they still did not have a full comprehension of okay. who Jesus is. As in it was it was very progressive. The other thing I'll say is that in terms of miracles, we usually expect someone got born on, again on Sunday. Mm-hmm. By the next Sunday, and a testimony uh, <laughs> how everything in his life has dramatically <laughs> changed. changed at once. <laughs> but in reality, deliverance is progressive. There are things God will change immediately. But there are things that take time, they take time yeah. and give you. And I think the reason some some deliverance take time is so that we can still carry out your humility. Yeah, nini. Yeah, that we still have a humanity. And you having that, you still have compassion on other people who are going through the same thing you're going through it. Mm-hmm. Because if even healing, it becomes so immediate. Yeah you'd lack a compassion for people who are going through it. You'd be like, Umtut was not healed because of a lack of faith or something like that. But since you went through a really lengthy process before you saw the manifestation of your, your miracle, you, 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 you tend to have a, a bit of compassion on other people who are struggling in their walk of faith. Because if everything happened just if you I think even you should be in heaven. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 if Jesus just came to you and made you perfect, uh-huh. then the place the place you should be is it's heaven, not, not here with us. But the fact that he leaves some things within us still undelivered, I, I think it's, 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 it, it's the purpose of it is so that we remain compassionate to people who are going through whatever we are going through. Yeah, and it, and it's it should be an encouragement to someone that the fact that you there are things you prayed about for deliverance and they have not come does not mean you're not yeah. you're not a believer mm-hmm. because it I, mean the, that God is not working. yeah he's not working because I think the the, the, the the place even the heart in Akujanga ni yeah you're struggling you're not fully delivered though God had has delivered you from and as I mentioned one two three but then there are areas in your life. Maybe debt or something. It and in the God goes your place. And and there people will come and say, maybe you are not really a believer. You you're not really saved. Are you your faith is yeah. in a miss. Yeah, there's something lacking here. Because we see in your life there's no fullness of delivery, deliverance. Yeah. I think of, let me as Benta is preparing her points, I just want to like retaliate the the importance of process. Let me just go to food because you know 
like those of you who love tea, coffee, for example, there's a difference between the instant coffee. There's a time you are craving coffee, you have the instant, it's there. But brewed coffee tastes different because the elements, the coffee has expanded. You know what? Those, those of you with Mwanase Manga, come on, imagine chai, instant like, tea, I'm a tea like, bag. I'm just like, a tea I, bag will, you know, when I want tea, shade? can I throw the throw shade? shade? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have a oh, oh, majani, majani, coffee, mm. coffee. When you open a hot chocolate, so do they go through the process? Well, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. now I'm giving the example of the things that I can relate with. Please trust my process. And then like even tea, like the Mahalika function, when I wake tea bags, but you, there are days you want to brew the tea. And even, okay, let me go to a place that you love. When you're picking, picking those pork ribs, eh? Kuna difference ya marinated ones and non-marinated ones. So you see, process needs to be, it's refining. Yeah. And I think even in our lives, like by the time I was getting born again, what were my biggest problems by then? Kuibaskari, because I was nine. Those things. But now over time, I've been being refined and the process is like the way you said. There are things I think right now, I can't say I'm at 100% at Tisa, Niko perfect, God, and Niko No, 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 no. I'm not ready for heaven yet. But still in my life, there are things that I've realized, yes, I've been delivered from some. And some took like a change of, oh yeah. But other things I have to keep going back because again, I am, I am carnal and I'm in flesh. So like I, the way I was saying, I keep going back to the cross. So yes, Benta, I'm sorry, I had yeah, to give the food interlude. Wait, just one example. If, if you read, if you read is is in any healing ministries, usually something you'll find that the healer at times the guy who is who has a very big anointing of healing, there are moments you'll find God lives. he's suffering from something, an ailment, and God is not healing that ailment. Yet this guy is a healer. But do you arthritis? But the moment I get to a place, I'm telling you the anointing. He'll heal this guy, he'll heal this guy. But here's the contradiction. God still yani, he does not heal ailment here. This person who is doing the healings. You you find his struggles, like I was reading our guy, he was very powerful in his healing ministry. But then he had the arthritis. And God will not heal. <laughs> Imagine. The guy will just go is an a, a limp. But then he'll touch guys. And, they get and I think the reason God did not fully deliver him from his arthritis is he remained with that compassion of people who are coming to him in search of healing. Because I found it a contradiction. This guy has such an anointing. But then when you healed, you can get missiles. I'm a leader, you can missiles. Then you're wondering, eh? I don't know, some funny, funny, I'm a malaria. Yet the guy, he had such a powerful healing ministry. And I think also, okay, wait, time. Time. Um, mm-hmm. I, I wanted to say also, over and above compassion, I think it's about dependence. John mm-hmm. Piper says that um, if if God could completely deliver us from all things, yeah. we'd not need God. You know, like if he sorted out everything about you why would you need to go back to god you know but he does it progressively so that you can learn to depend on god and i think that's a challenge to us when there are certain things that god does not do how we want him to do them is our response to go back to him and depend on him ama is our response you know peace out you know it's been real you know yeah so it's a challenge to us that we would instead um choose to depend on god and also lastly um your point your spiritual vision yeah. um i think market is so profound i think it has been woven into this chapter so much um when um these people are asking for a spiritual sign mm-hmm. they want to it's they've already seen you know with their physical eyes but they don't have spiritual sight you know which is why Jesus is saying i won't do any me. any mini because you don't have spiritual vision um when he asks them about um the 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 bread exactly the the living of the Pharisees he asks them um don't you understand yet um because they 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 looked at it from a physical point of view like their spiritual vision was not open enough for them to understand that god is not talking about um kate you know he's talking about um the yeast hypocrisy, hypocrisy exactly um and it goes on when um when 
uh, Jesus is talking about his death and Peter says, you know, he takes him aside to reprimand him and Christ asks him, you are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. You know, because he he has no spiritual insight, spiritual vision. And when he talked about um, Christ being the Messiah, then we see spiritual sight there because he was able to see things from, yeah. And I think that also has a part to play with that miracle of seeing men like trees and then later seeing the full, yeah. So I think it's a, it's, it's a gradual thing. We begin by seeing, you know, Eco, but you know, like we are not, yeah, there's no fullness of it. And I think we need to be careful as well um, in how we preach the gospel because sometimes we are seeing men like trees, yeah. but we talk about it as if it's the fullness of the truth and we mislead people, yeah. you know. But we need to get to a point where mm-hmm. there is full sight so that we are giving correct revelation yeah. and correct understanding of scripture. Yani that one, I couldn't have said it even any better. And I think even now as we just jump into the conclusion from there, the, the last part of um, the chapter, verse 34 to, to 38, where um, it explores the, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. Whoever, whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me, for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet to affect their soul? Or can anyone give, and or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes to his Father's glory with the holy angels. And I think there's something that Mushi had mentioned around self-centeredness. And again, now I think it would go into the. It's because of the lack of spiritual sight. Where I think if I do good, because even like the story of the rich man, yeah, like he was like, <laughs> bro, me, I'm gonna kill like you too. I need a lot of ones. God, oh, yeah, I'm gonna kill like you to say, come. like, oh, but now, please send my the, the one who was like, okay, wait, just send someone to my relas. I can tell them it's never that it's that serious because yeah, it's not that it's never that serious, but it's that serious. I just tell them to to think money, possessions, and all those things because a lot of times would be at that place of seeing men like trees and being it's it's, it's cool. Being Christians and be like, ah, was like attacking Kwakoka by the Yosini Shidayao. Being in church and be like, I'm seeing Benta doing whatever she is, but yeah, na munguake. There are two phrases we've over years we've been saying so casually, yet I think they are just removing us from the sight of because right now I'll gain popularity on earth, thinking that Pia Kule Heaven kuna VIP seats. Imagine akuna, no matter how many followers you have. I'll do so many things thinking I want to follow Jesus but not fully. Like this thing of denying themselves. Because even the way we were doing, I think, it was, was it chapter 6, the sending of the disciples, where they were told, don't even carry an extra tunic. So I want to serve, but I want to serve with eh, my suitcase here, because what? What is hardship? And I want to do things, I want to serve the Lord, but there are things I want an I want to be like, okay, a half-baked, not potato, but half-baked Christian. So I think a lot of times, the way you've said it has really brought it out in like, we can be seeing in the physical and seeing things and seeing gain and gaining, but kumbe uko heaven, there's even nothing we've done in the spiritual. But also because of what you were saying earlier and what you were saying last week, because I'm following the traditional rules. Okay, Christians go to church on Sunday. So you go to church because you've grown up going to church. You serve and give tithe because it's a thing to do. You're like, oh, says the church, lazima ni fanye kakitu. So, ni department gani ina waseju, ni kwa apa, but you're serving as Becky, not investing in the kingdom. So I think there's a lot for us to think about when we think about spiritual growth. Because I think now this is going into almost a, yeah, it's becoming a spiritual growth class. Because we can grow in ourselves, we can grow in our careers, grow in everything, grow in events, manage, grow in everything. Yet, we'll have done nothing for the kingdom. And what even Reverend Julian was saying during the service, at you may preach, you may preach, you may preach. Because you have done the work. Yeah, you preached well and good, but spiritually did nothing. So I think that was a really great perspective. Unless maybe anyone has last thoughts. Okay, let me also add it. Uh, I, I think the, the, there's also one of the benefits of reading the gospel chapter to chapter. <laughs> you, you don't skip the ones you don't mm. want to read. <laughs> because there's a way you can be presented <clears throat> that uh, the gospel is about having. It's about acquisitions. It's about getting and getting. Mm. But then you come to this scripture and you realize it's about dying to self. 
you get you you, you realize that as as even Julian was saying reverend, Julian, reverend yeah we that 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 the key the key purpose of even the gospel it's it's more of you being conformed into the image of Christ mm-hmm. not acquisitions so much Whoa. the more he's reflected actually that's when you can say it's taking effect on you the more Christ like you become that's the time we can say now the gospel is nini but then for us the measure has been it's been acquisitions and possessions that's why we say any someone has the glory of God based on how much they own yet Christ brings Bad. a reverse yeah. it's it's a person who is more dying to self that that that's a person now who the presence of God is is more of, of yeah yeah um final thoughts as well related to that um and also related to spiritual sight when you know God Christ mentioned about the yeast of the Pharisees um and they went on to think he's talking about you know bread actual bread because you know of a lack of spiritual insight and he'll ask them why are you arguing about having no bread um and i think it's it's a challenge to all of us yeah. you know how we view things you know god would ask why are you arguing about having no clothes or having no car or right. having no you know why is your why is your vision so in the physical realm that we are concerned about these things these everyday things when there are deeper things happening in the spirit that we should be aware of and i think that's why um god will say that we should um seek ye first the kingdom of god because there are deeper things there are deeper spiritual things that we need True. to be focused on so the question is why are you arguing about having no bread why are you arguing about having no clothes why are you arguing about having no car <laughs> you feel addressed <laughs> yeah so we Bye. need to <laughs> yeah <laughs> like go deeper you know to a chekukwa christo wa you know nataka god you nataka gari nataka god you nataka you know ama bwana sema tu bwana you know nataka god you nataka bwana and also go deeper into um why are we, we it, it is so bad that we're actually angry at god when yeah, he does like not do these you. things for us you know yeah. and so the question is why are you arguing about having no jaza apo for whatever it is so fadhali mjaza kwa comments msiogope Last I don't know for me it's just that um we cannot be baby faith forever. Out of shinda apo. If you want to grow, accept that you have to be a grown up Christian. Because they say mature Christian, they say my baby is born yeah. A baby will never stop being a baby. Like mtoto ata grow, ata kwa from 0 to 2 weeks, 2 weeks to 3 months, 3 months, 6 months. One year, two years, the next thing to talk up a mama, baba, the next thing. I'm like a grandparent. Exactly. Exactly. You get what I mean? So stop being a baby faith grow grow deeper get deeper and be very intentional with the word of god because how to shindili hapa like you're always like being spoon fed yeah that's just my take for this yep i cannot add anything more to that discussion guys as we say every week please do not also rely on this bible study at that's your only at me on tuesday to ndio nasoma ga bible na sunday imagine you can't be that kind of a christian so Read your Bible and pray every day if you want to grow. It's a song we sang in Sunday school, but I think even the more right now, yeah. we need to grow and bear fruit. Because also a tree without a fruit, the Bible has said it will be cut off. So don't be that tree that's not producing fruit. So every day challenge yourself to read the word and also memorize scripture. Yani, even though you get the Bible app phone, get a small Bible if you have to have the Kagidians we used to have. Because a lot of people make excuses. Oh, Bible yangu ni kubwa, handbag yangu ni ndogo. Wamana, mimi sina jua si ni wanaume tumebangi hata bags. Get the apps on. There are so many versions. Na ka Gideon's can either to share. Ka Gideon's ni size ya wallet. I'm challenging everyone. I'm going to say it. Get a Bible and read your Bible and also internalize and also pray. But beyond that, again as Terry has said, you have to grow in the faith. And you cannot rely on your pastor, your deacon, your cell group leader. You have to be the one to grow because in heaven atutaingia ti. Acha city lighters ingieni tent yenu ni ile. But weza can say tent no, you will go as yourself. So Please remember to read your Bible pray every day but also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also comment below kama umelan kitu and also we get, we keep saying if you have a question feel free to ask and someone will always answer you and we'd love to take this chance to invite you to our church City Lighters Church is at Nairobi Cinema our services begin every 
10.30 a.m. every Sunday. Yeah. But before 10.30, we have prayers at Uhuru Park that run from 9 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. And we welcome you. Come. And as we say as a church, welcome oh. home. So without much further ado, I'd love for Moshiri to conclude for us with a word of prayer and remain blessed. Yeah. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before your presence this afternoon, Almighty Father. We pray, O oh God, that uh, as you said, uh, if anyone wants to follow me, let them carry their own cross and, and follow you, Almighty Father. And so we we are asking you, O oh God, to help us in the crucifixion of our flesh, Almighty oh Father, so that they can be more of you and less of us, Almighty oh Father. We pray, Almighty oh Father, that uh, for those people who have had a progressive deliverance, Almighty oh Father, that you may give them strength, Almighty oh Father, that they may not lose hope and give up, Almighty oh Father, because they are wondering, this thing has taken too long, that you may, they may know, Almighty oh Father, that at the end of the day, O oh God, you're going to bring their deliverance, Almighty oh Father. I pray, O oh God, that as believers, we may, you may give us compassion and mercy, O oh God, Almighty oh Father, for people who are in situations that we were previously in, Almighty oh Father. Let us speak the truth in love, Almighty oh Father, and let us use the word of God to build each other up, not to tear each other as, as the, the enemy desires, Almighty oh Father, for he's the author of confusion, Almighty oh Father, and division. May we speak this, this, the, the truth in love, Almighty oh Father. May we have compassion and mercy for people who are struggling, Almighty oh Father. And remember, O oh God, that, we, that if it was not for your grace and your mercy, we would have been in the same place, Almighty oh Father. I pray for everyone who has come for BS today, that you may give them safe traveling masses and you may be with them, Almighty oh Father. I bless this, this channel, Almighty oh Father, that you may reach the people you've decided them to reach, Almighty oh Father. May we continue partnering with the Holy Spirit in this ministry. Bless us and continue ministering through this platform. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>